from adding ChatGPT directly inside of Excel so you can ask it anything to making formula smarter with the dot operator. There's a ton of new exciting Excel features. So let's go over eight of the main ones. And keep in mind for some of these, you're gonna need the latest Excel version. Let's get into it. First up, if you struggle to see which cell you currently have selected, there is a new tool which you just need to go over to the view section and click on focus cell. This basically highlights the row and the column that you're currently on so you can see it a lot more easily. In fact, within the drop down, we can change the color. Let's say that I go for a green color like this, so it's maybe a bit easier on the eye. And even if you see things perfectly fine just now, when you're on a Zoom call or somewhere with other people, it can make sense to use this focus cell to make sure everyone's on the same page. And to follow along with this video and try it out yourself, you can download the Excel file for free in the video description. Staying on the topic of colors, one pretty annoying thing is when people make the background color and the font color pretty much the same. You can see that's the case for the header as well as for all of these actual values. They're really hard to see. But luckily now Excel has a new feature so I can highlight all of these headers and if I go inside of this area you'll notice there's this high contrast only button so I can tick on that and now because my font is in black it's only showing me light colors so regardless of which I choose I can actually see the font quite well. The same thing applies with the font color itself so it's not just for the highlight area if I select this whole row below and I go inside of the font I can tick on the high contrast only and you'll notice that all of the values are now dark as my background is in white, so it's fully dynamic. The third new Excel feature is the dark mode, which depending on the Excel version you're in, if you go to the view tab, you should be able to see it. But if you can't see it like myself here, you just need to go over to file and all the way to the bottom, you'll notice the options. So click on that. And within this general pop-up, we want to head towards the bottom where it says personalize your copy of Microsoft Office. And here as the office theme, we want to go to choose a black one. So that's what I'm going to go for here. Press on OK. And you notice that now everything is in black. And if we go to the view area, I have this switch modes option. So if I click on that, the actual cells just turn white while everything else remains black. I can tick on it again to reactivate that part. And if I want this completely off again, I just need to go back to file options and choose another style from down over here. So instead of the black, I can choose just the white or the system settings. In number four, we have my favorite new Excel feature, which is ChatGPT inside of Excel. So for this, under the Home tab, you just want to head all the way to the right where it says Add-ins. You can see right now I have it right here in the center, but first we need to install it by going over to Add-ins. Click on More Add-ins towards the bottom. And once this loads up, you just want to look for ChatGPT. And it's going to be this one right here, ChatGPT for Excel. So make sure you add that it's free to install and get started with. Once you have this ready, just click on the button and you'll notice there's this thing on the left hand side as a bit of a tutorial, but we don't really need it. All we need to do to actually activate it is in here under the answer. Let's suppose that the question is, what Excel formula should I use to sum a list of values only if they're greater than five? So I can just ask ChatGPT for that. So it would be ai.ask, that's the function that I want to use. This is the prompt, I can close the parenthesis and hit enter. It's basically going to look all of this up in ChatGPT. So here it's saying I can use the sum if function and if I keep looking all the way to the right, here's the actual formula that I want to use. It even gives me an example, so I basically have ChatGPT fully installed inside of Excel. You might be thinking that's just a very easy question though, I probably wouldn't use ChatGPT for that. And if that's the case, let's go over a slightly trickier example where we want to extract the city. So it would be Barcelona, which is on the end here, Paris, which is buried in the middle, London, which is at the very start. So it's quite hard to know how we can do this with a formula. That's where we're going to use this AI tool again. So AI.extract is the option that we'll go for. As the values, we're going to select all of the inputs which are down over here, comma, and the extract. We want to extract the cities from them. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. Give it a second to load. And you'll notice it's able to detect all of the cities in here. So to do this, I don't think it's using any Excel formulas. It's simply looking at all of this data, looking it up, and trying to find which of these is a city and returning it. As you can see, it's able to look up data from the internet. That means that we can easily import any table. For instance, down over here, suppose I want the list of the 10 biggest countries in the world by population. 
continent and surface area. So I can type ai.table in this case. So it's going to be down over here. Hit the tab key. This is my prompt and that's all I really need. Close up parenthesis and hit enter and give it a second for it to load. And you can see we have all of these different countries, their population, the continent and the surface area as we've specified. That's not all though. With this ChatGPT feature, so far we've just been using their formulas. That said, if we click on the actual ChatGPT icon, which you might find on the right for your scenario, and we go to this robot icon called AI Newbie, this kind of works like a co-pilot or a chatbot where you can ask it any questions about your data and it's gonna give you some answers. Speaking of add-ins, we've now got Python inside of Excel. With it, we can do so much more than what Excel is capable of on its own. You can find this under the formulas tab in this insert Python area, or the other way to use it is typing equals py, hit the tab key there, and the first thing we need to do is give it a data range, which in our case, let's say is simply from Apple to ExxonMobil. Here's the share prices for these three companies. So I'm gonna select all of the data there, and instead of hitting enter, it says to use control enter to commit. That's because when we just hit enter, it simply goes to the next cell, which is not quite what we want. So in this case, we're gonna go control enter, and it's gonna create this thing called a data frame, which is basically like an area where it's storing all of this data. So if I go to this top left hand side, I can press Excel value, and it's actually gonna show all of my data. That said, it's fine with it collapsed right now, so I'm gonna press on Python object. So the first thing we can do here is try to analyze this data a bit. So what's the high point for Apple share price? What's the low point, etc. And for this, we can easily use a Python feature called describe. So we just need to type py, hit the tab key there, and we just need to select on the whole data frame dot describe is the feature that we we'll want to use. Open and close these parentheses and hit control enter. We just see this data frame again, but this time we do want to expand it. So I'm going to press on Excel value and you'll notice we see the count. So how many occurrences do we have? What's the average price for Apple, Microsoft and ExxonMobil, as well as a ton of other information. In fact, we can also try to find the relationship between these. So if Apple's share price goes up, will Microsoft's also follow as their competitors? And for that, we can just use the PY again. And this time select the same data frame area, but go for the core function, which is for the correlation between the share prices. Hit control enter again, and we're going to go to the extract value one more time. You'll notice now we have all of these numbers, which range from a one, meaning it's perfectly correlated, which is obviously the case with Apple to Apple, but Apple to Microsoft seem to have a negative correlation. So when Apple goes up, this one's actually going down and same thing goes with ExxonMobil. Now, Python has a ton of other use cases, especially outside of Excel. In fact, it's one of the most versatile and easiest programming languages to learn. So if you want to learn, I'd recommend you check out our Python for Data Analysis course. We'll first start with the very basics, installing Python and writing our first lines of code. Next, we'll learn variables, functions, loops and other important concepts. From there, we'll explore powerful Python libraries like Pandas, Seaborn and Matplotlib which will allow us to perform data analysis and visualization in Python. We'll also tackle two in-depth case studies that replicate real-world challenges, one focused on stock price analysis and the other one on crime data in Los Angeles. Plus, by the end of the course, you'll even learn to make your first machine learning project using Python to predict housing prices. So if you're interested, head over to the link in the description below to get started learning Python today. Coming in in number six, we can now make to-do lists very easily in Excel thanks to the new checkbox feature. So let's suppose over here we have the list of things we want to do every weekday and under this done area, we can now go over to insert and click on this checkbox. The nice thing about this is we can either tick on it manually with the mouse like that or we can just use the space key that does the same thing. I can select multiple, select the space and it works just like any other text. So I can go over to the home area, I can make it bigger, make it smaller, and I can also change the colors according to what I want. That's just one very basic use case though. If you want something a bit more advanced, here's what I'd recommend. Suppose we have an attendance list of people, we can easily put the check marks in here. So for that, I would simply select the whole area, go to insert checkbox, 
but the key thing is whether we add extra points and we want that to be dependent on whether they show up or not. So we can just create a simple if statement that says that if this part over here is equals to true, basically whenever there is a check mark, it's gonna show us true here behind the scenes. So we want to put a comma and in quotations, I can say extra 10 points comma and if false so if they don't show up i don't want to put anything for them so they're not going to get any points which i can show with two quotation marks close up parenthesis and hit enter i can now drag this all the way down to the bottom and when i check on this person you'll notice they get an extra 10 points but if they don't attend obviously they're not going to get extra points next up we have a very major upgrade for mac users so here in excel online we now have the alt key available so when you press option on a MacBook, you'll notice we have all of these different keyboard shortcuts. So let me show you why you should use them and some of the main ones. First up, you can see that all of these columns aren't well arranged. So I can go one by one and stretch them out a bit just by clicking on this area and going like that. But in fact, the easier method is to press Ctrl A first to select everything. And then the shortcut is Alt HOI on a Windows or Option HOI here on a MacBook. You'll notice that everything is being stretched out according to the length of the actual area. That's just one of the alt key shortcuts though. There's actually a ton of other ones. So I can select the whole area again with Control A and then go to Option AM. And this basically allows me to remove any duplicates from this data. I can press an OK and you can see that it's removed the two duplicates that were already there. Finally, as I scroll lower down, you'll notice that I no longer see the headers. So it would be nice to always see it. For that, just head over to row number three and the shortcut there is option WFF. When you do that, you'll notice that it freezes this top header row. So I can keep scrolling down and that's always gonna remain there. Of course, you can use your mouse for these shortcuts too. That said, in the short term, it might be faster, but long term using this option or the alt key is definitely gonna save you a ton of time. In number eight, we have a super simple yet very effective tool, which is the dot operator. So let me show you what it does. Over here, you can see that I have some data with someone's name and their revenue. Suppose that I just want to copy it into a new sheet. So all I need to do there is click on the equal sign and select this whole original area. That said, I want to be able to account for any future rows, so it might be easier for me to simply select the whole column B. Once I'm done, I can just hit on enter there and you'll notice that I get all of this new data, but for the bottom ones, we get all zeros. That doesn't look particularly nice. In fact, if I copy this across to the column C, I have the same problem with all of these zeros. So a very easy way to get rid of that is just to put a dot here at the very end. So after this colon, put a dot and then a B. When you do, you'll notice we get rid of these zeros. Same thing goes with this side, but the nice thing is if I update the original version here and I just put my name here and some data as well, if we go to the new version, it's still being updated. So simply by adding a small dot there, we've been able to make this fully dynamic. Now with so many Excel formulas out there and new ones being released, it's hard to know which one to actually use. So if you want to know how to use the perfect Excel formula every time, you should watch this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.